Dice not that big of a deal, and if they ever get out of position and we can TP five heroes within like eight seconds, then man, you're gonna have a good team fight. So, Darkseer picked, huh? So, uh, that looks to be like what June is gonna shift over. Yeah, go for that. That was one of his heroes, and it is a popular hero he does use. Ten yeah, so. Remaining. Darkseer being grabbed up. We mentioned a bit about it in the previous game. The the headache he can bring in a laning stage if he's put up against a more of a melee core who has to juggle the Ion Shell. It doesn't look like Virtus Pro have committed quite yet to their Illidan hero, so they do have time to adjust if necessary. Uh, brings in the wall. It's newly buffed. 45 seconds from the get-go. Uh -huh. What the utility it really brings to this game, though, I'm not sure yet. I'm convinced. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't seem like the vacuum wall is going to be a game changer to use against a team like Virtus Pro. They still seem pretty damn elusive to get away from it. Snowball, a blink away from Queen, a quick Naga song will just disrupt the whole get. You know, the whole thing. I'm still point. not. I'm still not feeling the synergy yet from newbie maybe they got something yeah. waiting with this fifth pick to make it all come together you know maybe you know we see some teams pull out something crazy you get your like sven your vacuum into a, a lion finger i mean something so they need something that it's, gets to convince me here they've got really good ultimate synergy but they have really terrible basic skill synergy and it's uh dark steer i guess it's versus no it's not an august iron carry they don't have, they haven't picked their carry yet so mm -hmm. at the moment i feel like the dark steer pick is definitely out of there like if they can get a vacuum into disruptor ulti with an echo slam and a call done like that's great but who's he gonna put iron shell on during the team fight gyrocopter i guess gyrocopter is pretty good because you will be chasing a lot more within melee range with rocket barrage but I guess that that's that's pretty good. I guess Iron Shell on Gyro with Surge on him is potentially amazing. Um, but Maybe past it's, that, yeah. it's not very good on Earthshaker, really, because he's going to be kind of scared most of the time unless he does really well. Uh, not good on Disruptor. I, I I agree with you. I I think that the synergy here is moderate at best, not amazing, and they don't even know who the carry is going to be. So VP almost certainly is going to pick a range carry if they can. Yeah. That way they don't have to deal with Iron Shell being Darkseer's biggest strength. Range carries that naturally stand out to me that illidan has gone for. Drow, you don't get your Visage. You do have range with Queen of Pain, uh, which would make her mid lane crazy good, nah, but she's but pretty damn frail. They have two melees as well. Silent Illidan's one of the few people who will pick up a Silencer, but that always seems like a response to when a team likes to pick up an early like Storm Spirit or something like that. He he gets the Silencer as a immediate shutdown. It, it would have been a oh, pretty good Silencer yeah, game yeah. against Earthshaker, Disruptor, Darkseer, very reliant on casting. And they pick Anti-Mage, so this is okay versus Darkseer, because you've got your mana shield, your third skill, yeah. it'll reduce the magic damage you take, and you have a Quelling Blade, so you can last hit pretty reliably, and we in and out, and if things get really dangerous, if Darkseer tries to kill you, you can always blink into trees and buy yourself a little bit of time. So, I think it's okay, and they have Dazzle to keep his HP up for Ember Spirit pick. Um, I think it's good against Quap. Uh, it's pretty good to Anti-Mage, it's... I mean, Moo's a really good player. It can clear Naga Siren Illusions. Those should never be a threat. I, I think this is okay. This, I, th I think VP was forced into a carry they don't really want that much. It's good versus Darkseer, actually. They can 1v1 that lane very easily, and Anti-Mage can just pressure the Darkseer a lot, drain his mana. Um, so the sports can roam more. Uh, we'll see if that allows them to pressure a lot. Uh, Ember Spirit's definitely going to get pressured a lot mid. Yeah. So I think Earthshaker's going to have to focus a lot on... Uh, zoning mid or fissuring a lot or sitting behind Ember Spirit. So it's going to come down to how the supports rotate this game. And yeah, I, I think VP is a bit better draft here. You know, we've been seeing a lot of Ember Spirit this tournament as yep. well. And it's really been his tournament so far because coming up into TI, we didn't see that much Ember Spirit. I felt like initially Ember Spirit was kind of making a name for himself as a good response to the huge illusion cores. You know, your PLs, your Nagas occasionally helps hold the high ground, and he has a ridiculously high ceiling to make those kind of comeback plays. You know, if so be, you get a couple of Battle Furies, a crit, and then maybe even a Rapier if necessary, just to kind of get your team back into its element. Here, though, you know, not really going against a whole lot of illusion heroes. I do fear it could be a bit susceptible to the hefty burst that Quap brings. I don't know if it's something that G could consider, but let's say he gets like a Yules that could rid of the Flame Guard very easily, and then he could be caught with the with the big blast thereafter. But they don't have a lot of silence to stop him, so Quap could also go down the road of an Orchid to help with that front. We'll have to see what the answer is going to be. As newbie, they go with their invade. They oh, do wow. plant a sentry, but it looked like it was pinged immediately thereafter. <laughs> so yeah. I think they know exactly where this sentry is going to be, and they'll look to go for the block. It's on both sides, yeah. too, though. They also have an OBS over there with the block. If they get one in the middle in a good spot, they might be able to clear him out. Looks like FNG Ooh, they got will the get the one. He almost got both. If he would have placed a little bit to the right, he would have been fine. And in fact, he probably should have. 
because uh, his he has a little bit of wasted sentry space on the left side here. Like a route here is a little bit wasted, so he maybe could have gone both. But the reason they place it on the two opposite right sides is because it does become very difficult to deward that. So the camp will not spawn. He'll use the second sentry. We'll see if he gets it. It'll be close. Yeah, that feeling of you pretty sure you felt you you've debunked it. The creep, it's yeah. going to be there and ready to go, and then 30 seconds rolls in, you're like, ah, I got to pull out the other sentry. It's a hard camp to, to deward, it. honestly. It's one of the hardest in the game. All the other pull, the other side pull camps are very easy, but that one's tough. Another advantage for the sweet radiant side, as if yes. there wasn't enough that a lot of people say. Well, it's a dire advantage, technically. Oh, I guess, yeah, you're right. Technically, it is a dire advantage because they're able to block from all fronts, and it makes it more difficult for radiant to catch it out. You're right, you're right. But well, they do have that sweet off lane to work with, so I guess it's a fair trade. And there it is, the mana drain on the Dark Seer, already down to 127. And for a hero that needs a soul ring, that was his clarity potion, by the way. This is all, that's his last nine control. He's got one more, but Ugh. that's that's a big hurt for him because it may uh, limit his ability to get level two. And that's the point where you're completely survivable as a Dark Seer because yes. you can surge away. Yes. I'm actually surprised FNG's not getting more in his face so that he can't get close enough to leech the XP to get level two. He is stepping up there now. He's like, don't even think about coming close. Mid lane, Lil, he's actually flirting here with Moo a bit. It's not doing any damage, but he's keeping him away from the wave and kind of second guessing a bit. He's just like right in his face. That's Moo's, good. Moo's just kind of like, ah, this is a bit fishy here. And G's just like, I'm happy as a clam. I'm able to get Ooh, the free. He pulled the range creep. Small mistake from Lil here. That's oh. important. But he does do the Riptide. Riptide's one of the best level one skills. Does 130 magic damage, which is very high for a level one, and it reduces armor by two. Oh, so. yeah. Very easy little harass there, and that guarantees that G is able to get a bit of a CS advantage, get his bottle a bit faster, and then spam out Moo in terms of mana. So, good that he did that. Especially because he went no first, so this is like a greedy build, and uh, Ember Spirit went light, slightly less greedy, and all of a sudden he's ahead. Ember Spirit, one of those heroes, you gotta have a good start. You don't want to be caught in a, in a bit of a situation where you, you start things a bit slow and then you're reaching. I was talking about it a bit. Oh, I can't remember who. Was it with you? Talking about it as one of the slowest buildups ever in the game. It might have been someone else. It just He takes a long time to itemize before he really is ready to fight. A lot of them like to step off. You get your phase. You get your drums. Then yeah. you start building into your battle fury thereafter. Some say you can go with an a, a, a ring of Aquila instead of the drums. But you got to get like through steps one through four before you actually manage to get a battle fury, and then you're just finally getting your farm acceleration, and yeah. then is when you do your hit, your big damage. So then, he, he can yeah. be in fights, but to hit hard, it takes a lot. But the nice part is that he can definitely get kills with just his skills. So um, he's he's viable to do that. So and against a lot of these heroes as well, anti mage Quap, he can stop their blinks for a couple seconds. So it puts him in a good spot. G's got his bottle here. He's going to be doing a little bit of bottle crane. So his team will sacrifice their items for that. Uh, on the offline, DK Phobo is having a really tough time. He's only level one here. And comparing that to Darkseer, Darkseer is almost three, and it looks like he's just given up and going to jungle. Because he knows versus an anti mage, anti mage is going to drain his mana. So that advantage that uh, Darkseer has, first of all, getting farmed, but also hurting your opponent is now going to be a little bit worse. But on the bright side, there's a small stack here in the jungle. So yep. June will be able to get a soaring. And at that point, he'll probably go back to his lane and continue being annoying to Illidan. It is time, though, for AM to just kind of do as he pleases here and build into his own Battle Fury pretty quick. FNG might also get a bit rambunctious, just make some stacks on the side, knowing that this Dark Seer isn't really around. He can afford to go elsewhere and make things happen. Newbie yet to upgrade their Courier. Come on, guys, let's get together here. 30 seconds past, past due. They'll get it up and going once more. And look, they did a bit of a swap here. It looks like Purge Lil now taking the spot of the off lane, at least holding down the fort for DK Foas to make his return. It looks like he had to shuffle back to base to get up. He's still just level two at this point. Naga's kind of a good offlane here, actually. Uh, high armor. Ooh, this is dangerous. He's blocked for about eight seconds. Rabbit's coming over. This could be him in trouble. Oh, eats two tangos. Oh, there was actually space the whole time. <laughs> so he caught some two tangos, though. Yeah. Beta Jar away from the farm, I suppose. Left right top, top near the rune. Quick roll forward, and that's going to be an immediate first blood for Virtus Pro. DK Phobos said a bit of a struggling start for him, but. He gets in tandem with G, and both of them take down the Disruptor. So, good little start there for Quap. Uh, gonna get her 6 a bit faster, and Tusk as well with the Snowball. Tusk is actually very high damage at level 2 there. He does, what, 100 damage with an ally with Snowball, and 70 from Ice Shards. Oh, yeah. Plus the movement positioning. Like, that's a super dead support, and I feel like that was just a bit of a poor play from Banana there. Because he, that he did go for that rune spot. They didn't have ward vision either, and it was nighttime. And Quap alone could have solo killed him. I guess he could have glimpsed him, but... Man, that was just super dangerous with, if two of them were there. Banana returns back to this mid lane just to be a babysitter here for Moo a bit. 
So we're looking at Mu, he's about level five and a half, 14 and two CS, doubled that CS on the other side is G on his Queen of Pain. Not really surprised to see her being able to kind of take advantage in this lane, and, but Mu should not be caught out and die. Should be elusive enough, especially once he gets his level six to not run into too much trouble. But. Yeah, he, he. that's actually a really good point. Uh, I think VP is going to have a ton of trouble killing him as the game continues. Because yeah. even if he gets netted by Naga Siren, I'm pretty sure he can just use his ultimate. So yep. he's not going to be too threatened. I, I assume you can also slide a fist. So that's one issue going into the late game. We may see a fast Hex come out of Queen of Pain. We saw, I think, Navi doing that earlier. Somebody did that against uh, some, some hard-to-kill hero. They, mm -hmm. they picked up a fast Hex and almost never built this Quap right now. It's almost always like Ags into... Uh, Octarine or something like mm -hmm. that, but they need some way to deal permanent stuns. Maybe it'll be a basher, who knows? But Amber Spirit, like many, many games today, will be a problem if you get to late game, so you have to be careful. Yeah, especially if it's picked up late, like it was here for Newbie. Some teams do commit early to the Ember Spirit. You can always get a couple of sweet options to kind of take it back at him, a disruptor, a solid grab, but this time it is on his own team. They head to the bottom, six minute room gonna pop up. Illusion here, a sweet one there for G, gets the assistance from FNG to protect it. DK Phobos went to the high road there for that rune. Still hanging around this mid lane. Did manage to get himself up to level four. You compare that to your Dark Seer, almost level five. So a good little recovery here. Opted to go for the bottle first on June mm -hmm. before stepping into a soul ring thereafter. I think you kind of have to do this versus an anti mage because anti mage has burst mana drain. So you need to counter that by having not only the heal to compensate for it, Man. but also the uh, burst mana, mana heal, <laughs> whatever that's called. I, uh, that I know burst what you mean. mana heal. The burst of the blue Regen. bar. Yeah. So the bottle is nice. Bottle with the soul ring guarantees that you have tons and tons of resources and maybe if you get a haste or a dd or something like that it'll be nice so he's in a lot of trouble he's kind of caught here here comes the net he didn't actually surge yet so no. this is going to buy him some time but a big heal and an ultimate as well puts him low he uses bottle and the fissure is going to block oh. them actually big stop right there sonic wave not going to be able to catch him on the way out she's going to end up going down what a turnaround for newbie and rabbit even giving it a vault he's going to get just shoot apart lil two drop fng barely alive rabbit wants blood though is he going to get it he certainly will as the shallow Great grave does TV. expire. Beautiful rotation from Newbie, and they're gonna possibly get more. Sanchang lays out a fissure. Ilden is gonna be badly beaten and wounded. He might have to go back to base, and he will. Almost like a four-man takedown, technically, with having to force everyone back. But how did that happen? It felt like they maybe jumped the gun on the ensnare a little bit. If they waited for him to surge and then ensnared right after, it could have locked him closer, but yeah. he was able to surge, and he has a level two surge at that and he just hightailed it out. He got out so fast, by the time G showed up, still couldn't catch him with that sonic wave, and they got drawn in so far so fast that Newbie were able to rotate and just catch Virtus Pro out of position with all of those skills on cooldown. Yeah, that fissure was great. It just killed their possibility to chase, and yep. at that point, Darkseer was fine, and Gyrocopter just flies right in with face boots and has huge mobility and damage advantage over everybody. Like, at this point, uh, a Gyrocopter is way stronger than an Anti-Mage is. It's not even close. And that's why he's shifting the lane to, to pressure here. It's really smart. And it also guarantees that Banana, who's been sacrificing by pulling and roaming, is able to catch up a bit. And Illidan can't do anything about this. Because he basically needs free farm until 12 minutes to get his item. And he's farming very well right now. But now he can't just do the lane creeps like he wants to. So this is a great rotation. Awesome bait from Darkseer. Good patience not using Surge. And it's led to a huge newbie laning advantage. Now it's just kind of FNG stuck in the lane by himself, and he can't do a whole lot. He'll occasionally heal, but it's almost setting up Newbie for a position to maybe consider diving that tower. We got June and Sanshank both nearby. And Sanshank, even he has his Arcane Boots on this Earthshaker now, so he's getting some really good farm for the support. I like FNG's, FNG's uh, alone. his position is good. He ate this tree right here, and then he can eat this tree over here, and oh. then escape if he does get dived. So nice little very, tree very closets he can hide in in case oh, the, he, the, the bad men come. He ended up using his other one over here, so he's going to hide down in that position, because getting dived is very, very likely here. He definitely can't leave the trees and just try to run away. So there's a high chance that they have wards, so this is the smartest thing he can do right now, basically just hide. He doesn't even have boots yet. He knows he's going to be poor all game. He's even going to max Shallow Grave first, and this is what you do when you're behind on Dazzle. He'll just Radiant's sit here and sap what loose ends of XP he can. And it doesn't even look like Rabbit's going to bother checking behind the tower. They'll just continue just holding their firm ground in this lane. DK Phobos has found the time, though, to farm up on his tusk in exchange for the action that's been breaking out on the bottom. So he's level 6, actually almost getting to level 7 here. It looks like they might want to utilize that. They got a smoke in works here for Virtus Pro. They got Lil and G in tandem. They're going to see Banana here. There's a commit forward from G. Gets Sonic Wave off, and he gets the free trip back out to safety because of that glimpse. Back to farming. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, thank you. Camp. I was actually going to go to that large camp afterwards. The I really efficiency. appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, so he's going for the Orchid Rush. An item we actually don't see that often is Queen of Pain, but it is the counter against Ember Spirit, Ember, and that's yeah. what they're doing. Um, the only downside is that if Ember gets a Manta or a BKB, that he is then countered the Orchid, but if the Quap gets the Orchid at a really good time, then it can lead to tons and tons of Ember Spirit kills, especially if you silence him before he casts his Flame Guard, his third skill, which yes. gives him a lot of survivability against yeah. magic. You want to time that out appropriately, but if you're an Ember Spirit, you don't want to have to get those items. A BKB and a Manta. Top lane, Snowball in there, winning a Banana. He just died, he's dead again. See you later, Banana. Jeez. And Ember down. going after Lil. Ooh, oh, like the triple flame. flame. Oh, the triple smash remnant special, I like to call it. They Not going to be him. enough. Will they go after him? He, they know that he doesn't have his ultimate anymore, so things are really dangerous for him. Phobos has Snowball no. in two, but it's, yeah. It's too tough. Jeez. There's gone. no mana on Queen of Pain. There's no way. So That's still good, though. I mean, they, they waste three of those. That means he's going to be playing a little bit more scared for a bit, and he spent a ton of mana doing that. It's actually very mana-heavy to use your skills on uh, Ember Spirit, so he's going to need another rune before he's good. Actually, Illidan coming up here to farm. Ooh. Newbie had been eyeballing G in the mid lane, maybe hoping to get something set up with San Sheng, and then follow it up. The gyrocopter rocket brush called on top lane though to make the go. Oh, grabs them. Ooh. Snowball forward. They even commit the big void for it. It Great is going to be enough after the right click. Rabbit trying to get some redemption here. The flat cannon is going to work onto DK Phobos. Ooh, and he him. does go down. Catches him with one last little peck. He was getting very close to at least having some eye shards to separate himself, but not going to be happening. Rabbit gets the redemption. It is now going to be 5-4. to four, A slight advantage for Virtus Pro. We take an early look at your net worth grab, and it's just slowly creeping back the way of Newbie. XP only slightly in favor of Virtus Pro. This game looking pretty even at this point. That's such a huge kill to get that. And that was the enemy's hard carry, getting a kill on the one hero that's going to hold the whole things together in the mid to late game. I mean, obviously, Gyro is doing fantastic at 3 0 and 1, but the one hero that can be really aggressive and go around ganking is going to be Ember Spirit. Far better at that than Gyrocopter. Gyro's more of a pushing teamfight hero. Ember Spirit's like, a, I'm going to kill your support super easily. And if he's not getting the kills, that he needs and he's dying to the enemy carry then what's going to fall afterwards Radiance is the queen of pain orchid and then quap can just start solo killing him and then things Dyer's get really bad for him mm, sen Sheng looking to come around from behind was almost premeditated it seems drops a nice ward here was not pinged out they do Radiance scout him and then they quickly see that there might be a ward down and they deward it nicely immediately. done nicely done from virtus pro that's a good way to kind of scout out your enemies, make sure you check those inventories, see when they have a ward, and then see when they don't promptly thereafter. You can, by deduction, easily figure out where those wards are going to be going down. And yeah, they really walk in. And, mm -hmm. and right. now, Tier 1 is just going to be sacked. Going to be a grab for Newbie. Virtus Pro elsewhere had pressure on the mid lane, bottom lane. G going to work on the Tier 1. On his Queen of Pain, trying to round up that second Oblivion Staff, getting that Orchid online. Seems pretty crucial if they want to keep Moo in check. Lil doing a little bit of stack in here for the Anti-Mage. I'm sorry, that's for G. That's definitely the most important item to finish. Obviously, a Battle Fury on Anti-Mage is really, really important. And he's still about 1,400 away. But if G is able to pull all these creeps together and again finish Zorkid, then it's not even just Ember Spirit, actually. It's pretty much every hero in the game, with the exception of maybe Darkseer, who's going to have a mech in a second. But he can solo kill Earthshaker. He can solo kill the Disruptor super easily if he silences them. And the same goes for Ember Spirit as a possibility. So he's got to finish this thing. And when he does, it gets VP basically has huge advantage because they can four mana roam and anti mage can split push other places and they're gonna be very safe. And if we look at the other side for newbie on what they need to kind of throw together so that they can assert their own dominance in these fights, you're looking at Disruptor who's getting pretty close to level six, not quite there yet. Would definitely help if they wanted to get this kill on the AM. Even with the Thunder Strike, they still have to oh, Echo. Echo follow up and he is not going anywhere. Get dunked on, kid. <laughs> he goes down, Illidan. He slightly played that wrong. He stayed around because the Thunder Strike would give vision and therefore he could get Glimpse back. So he basically had to stay in the range until the Thunder Strike was gone. But his position, he was just slightly too close to the Earth Shaker. And as soon as that Echo Slam landed, the Chain Sun began and that was a dead anti mage. So almost played that perfectly, but his positioning was just slightly too bad. Just for that one kill, that Disruptor I said was almost level 6, he's almost level 7. So he's able to play wow. a nice catch-up game. He's got a Stack Storm ready to go. It looks like they're ready to play. They smoke up and they're on the move and they're going to hang behind Mu here. He's going to be their lead and scout. He's got a haste run, so he is just shuffling his way across. It looks like potentially eyes on FNG in this mid lane, who will sneak out the back door. For now, just rendezvousing with uh, June a bit. The rest of VP up in this top lane they pushing might find in. Oh, they might. He's breaking their smoke. 
Does, does he see? Pop? I think he does. Oh, they're going to get him. Banana could get an easy glimpse pull back here, but that might not even be necessary. Almost. Just a quick catch, Fissure, quick slide of fist, and he is done for. Moo picks up that kill, and Newbie take advantage as far as kills go. Now six to five for them. Virtus Pro on the split, looking to take down a tier one in the top lane. Newbie, are they going to go look to defend? Oh, they're looking to maybe catch him out from behind here, Purge. They have the ward to scout it out. This tower is dead, though, so they're going to kill it and blink out, no problem. I, they let the creeps kill it. Oh, Moo, though, Moo find him. shows up, throws Doesn't out a remnant. Slight. Yeah, he's not going to catch him. him. Can't do the chance, Snag. So tower goes down, and they get out. So despite the last couple kills going in their favor, it's still it's still a potentially losable game by all means. Like, Newbie has definitely caught up a lot here mm -hmm. with their little ganks and things. They've also pushed all the tier 1 towers, so now the map's essentially open, whereas VP has less of those. So VP really needs to get their tower pushing and their ganking going. If they don't succeed at that, they're going to be at a huge disadvantage with that. So, But they're still in a very good place. Um, huge items picked up. Uh, Orchid is done on Queen of Pain. Anti-Mage has just about got his Battle Fear and 300 gold. And now Newbie's going to get split around the map, unless they get ganks off. Back on the move once more here. Newbie going to invade the Versport territory. Smoke going to be popped here. They know Naga's farming nearby. They're oh. rolling in. Can they get it? No! Ooh, there was a lot of creeps there if he wanted to go for a Hail Mary of a sleight of fist chains. Not going to be happening. Yeah. Lil makes it away. And that smoke ain't going to be coming up short. So a mini victory there for Virtus Pro, who will have their own smoke movement here. G crosses through the for? wave, pops out a screen. Probably hoping Newbie didn't see that. I, I think they smoked because they anticipated an immediate Roche, but I think they then again decided that there's no way that they're going to be able to get there in time. So by doing that, they instead say, all right, we're going to go set up for a kill then. And unfortunately for them, it's going to be newbie getting Roche no matter what here because they, they're not contesting. And they're looking for someone that's farming like Gyro, maybe Ember Spear. Maybe they didn't even anticipate them taking Roche, but Roche is definitely going to go down. Oh, yeah. We look at the vision right now, Virtus Pro, and that whole Roche area is in the dark. If you look at Newbie's vision, they can get the gist that they already see FNG top lane. There's probably something going down. Uncontested Roche grab nonetheless. It's going to be an easy snag here. Do we prioritize putting it on the gyro here? Yep, we do. Rabbit's going to grab that, that yeah, one. Definitely. They immediately TP towards the top. Do Virtus Pro stay and swing? Or do they look to retreat? We'll have to see here. They do have the song. G leads in. Big blast connection onto Rabbit. Almost cost him the Aegis right there. Will. Beautiful setup. Goes down Lil. He's just going to set up the retreat call right now for the rest of his team. They're happy just taking that Aegis Will he get back. Fissured? Oh, he's in trouble now. He's yeah, waiting he's too long. Yeah, he's all the way in. And yeah, there's the Fissure connection. Moo's going to be able to catch him. That's not worth it. Rip him apart. And yeah, they will lose the life of Lil. I think his plan was was pretty close to correct, but I think he was really worried about the Fissure because you can Fissure from the range of being slept. So he didn't want to TP in vision, but he, I don't think he thought about that until too late. And then he was like, oh, wait, I could get Fissured. If he would have TP'd right away, he would have been fine, actually. But he didn't really know where Urshaker was, and he waited too long in at that point. That's a kill. But I think that's worth it. Uh, it's, you're trading Aegis, and by the Aegis going away, they can actually take a team fight. They don't They don't have to let Newbie bully them. They can just take a straight-up fight. I think it's okay. But the problem is they're going to have to wait for Quapple. That's the only downside. It feels like they're also waiting for something more from DK Phobos. Is it a Blink Dagger? It looks like on Tusk. Maybe it's I looking to be their so, initiator, yeah. set in with an immediate Waller's Punch, Snowball thereafter. Trying to be the bruiser for his team, I to say. Ilden, he's got that Battle Fury now complete. Looks like a Vlad's is probably one of the next options for him. Still got to go down that AM checklist. Same goes for Ember, though, on the other side. Moo, he's got the phase drums. Now, uh, I imagine the cookie cutter buildup will continue, and he'll decide to go for Perseverance, Battle Fury thereafter. But he's making pretty good time. 2-1 two, and 2-1 two, is Ember Spirit here. Mm -hmm. Mu won not to get caught out very often, had low deaths even in the previous game on his Queen of Pain. He's very elusive. So the levels on the two supports on VP are still pretty low, though. Uh, level 6 on Naga Siren, he, she hasn't really been farming a whole lot. And FNG as well, I haven't really seen very much from the supports this game. But they are pretty passive supports. It's really about the cores on VP here. Mm -hmm. And both, all three of them are in very good spots. Tusk has his blink already, he's got a treads. He can basically initiate, try to burst down Ember Spirit or the Disruptor. I think what he's actually going to aim for is Earthshaker, though. He wants to keep Earthshaker out of the fight, stop him from blink ulting. I don't think he realizes that he has a blink yet, but they've got to realize that it's soon. So if he can just jump right in and try to take out Earthshaker or the Disruptor. Mm -hmm. It'll give them a huge advantage in the fight. And they might run into the Ember right now. And Mu pops um. his Flame Guard, steps back, considers a re-engagement because Sanshing is en route with an Echo and a Blink Dagger ready to go. They see FNG TPing away. They won't. 
He's in a dark pocket, but they make the jump on the G. He's got they get the Fissure. Oh, he doesn't. They got the chains. G, follow up Echo, not going anywhere. He's going to get battered on down. Your Queen of Pain hits the deck, and Newbie advanced now 8-5. to five. That was a big mistake from G there. He had to silence the Earthshaker, not the Ember Spirit. Ember Spirit already casted his Searing Chains. He wasn't worried about Ember casting any more spells. It was about the Earthshaker casting stuns. If he would have silenced the Earthshaker, he easily could have blinked into trees and potentially TP'd out, depending on where the Fissure hit. Maybe wait for the second blink and then go. Ooh, pullback glimpse. It looked like it was for Phobos, but he still makes his way out from the southern corner. But yeah, I certainly agree. It's one of those things you can't help but chalk up to maybe the nerves, the heat of the moment. Mm -hmm. Maybe he didn't see him. Maybe he only saw the Ember running at him. Yeah. Um, I think it was day vision, though, so I think he did have vision. But it's a pretty big mistake. Illidan trying to steal the Ancient Stack, but he's getting so low. He actually runs right past Darkseer. I don't think Darkseer noticed his EXP gain. He may have been able to have been like, wow, I'm getting experience from somewhere. That's weird. <laughs> Maybe he's quickly trying to translate that Darkseer is not here in the mid lane for a fight for Newbie, but he's certainly here now with that quick speed. He has a DD rune that actually just expired, but it looks like Virtus Pro possibly not looking to defend this one. Lil does have a song here, not looking to set anything up, and Illidan actually rotates in. They're going to look to defend oh, this They move in. Move, they get the jump. Reynolds, back Huge up. Static Storm ultimate from Banana, though, is just certainly set the tone here. Jeep, not going to be living. Gets help from some shallow grave, but it was a wonderful quick counter fight from Newbie. Illidan in trouble, going to get glimpsed right back into trouble. Able to Great blink away, save. though. Makes it up into the high ground here. Gets earned, though. There's going to be the heal from FNG just to make sure he stays alive and well. But Newbie certainly come out as the kings of that. They take down three and this tier two tower. Doesn't look like they're going to quickly let up either. They're going to move on in. That was too hard of an initiation there. I mean, like, if you go in that hard on an Ember Spirit, and there's an Earthshaker with a Blink sitting back, and there's a Vacuum Wall in Darkseer, and there's a Disruptor ulti, that's what happens. Three heroes just die for nothing, pretty much. They go back and get, they catch oh. Illidan. Oh! Great song. Ooh, Sen Sheng. That's just terrifying. He blinks in. He's standing next to me. That is scary. Well, they stop him, and he has no mana now. So we'll see if Newbie look to retreat. Moose says no. I'm he's happy. To fight. No, he's dead. Gets in. Gets Illidan with the remnant forward, and they get the follow up, taking down FNG. DK Phobos, one of the last in load survivors, is going to get chopped up from Moo. Double kill for him. Double kill for Rabbit. G snipes in. Gets a quick pick on the disruptor, but the damage has certainly been done. They get the tier three. Raxes are now going to be exposed. Kill Moo. Virtus Pro. There are four of them on the sidelines. No buyback. First to be in will be Lil, but it looks like the Rax is in jeopardy here. One will certainly go down. They actually want dead? G. They're baiting oh it to get G. Gosh. They get the kill. The lockdown is nothing to scoff at here, Perch. Yeah. That's two times now. Illidan jumped in the initial fight. He got caught out, locked down. The song tried to save him, but it wasn't enough. And then there, G. Newbie come out huge. Makes it a five-man wipe total. Rax is down mid lane. And it looks like they have certainly shaken off whatever the hell happened in game one. <laughs> they just have perfect picks against VP's heroes, basically. Like the Ember Spirit, it's basically about the Ember Spirit. He initiates the fight on these two squishy blink heroes with a three second disable. They can't blink, they just have to stand there and eat whatever newbie decides to throw at them. And the follow up is Earthshaker stuns with a fissure or the blink dagger. They could do Disruptor ulti, they could do vacuum into walls, they could just run in with Gyrocopter and Rocket Barrage. They're just guaranteeing all this disable against VP's heroes. And VP's not ready to fight yet. They need like a Manta or a BKB on anti mage before he feels comfortable, but they, they got so much early advantage from the first couple lanes and these supports on VP are, aren't really leveraging anything. Like Naga Siren hasn't really helped get any kills off like they didn't need to win their lanes because there was nobody there so all of a sudden their supports just did nothing and they got under farmed and they lost that first fight bottom and because of that they've always been trying to limp back since that point and it's very very tough for them they, they have to try to turtle this game as long as possible but getting a rax at 20 minutes is such a big disadvantage that it's looking awfully like this game is going to go 1-1 at the moment yeah I don't mean to add on to the harping for this Naga pickup, but you know, in recent history, the Nagas I see picked up, they're utilized in a sense where it's really to shut down a component of what the other team offers. Let's say an Undying. You get to sleep and take out the two very easily. Want the hold to stop. They're making it go on to June here. That's He's a, dead. That's a very quick execution. He was there a second ago, Purge, but it, I could have sworn it might have been an yeah. illusion he went down so fast. But Darkseer are going to get dropped. Can he make it out alive? FNG, though, not going to be so lucky. They see him. They kill him just as fast, if not faster. And uh, it will be a support for the Darkseer. Good trade, though. But as far as the Naga goes, yeah, you get your sleep to help to the Tombstone. Maybe you yourselves have a Disruptor that you can get a beautiful setup with your, you know, Kinetic Field Static Storm or any sort of huge team fight to take advantage of the song. It just doesn't feel like VP have that kind of synergy. It seems like the song yeah. is more defensive. But the problem is, is it is... 
VP are the ones to jump in, <laughs> and then newbie pull out a very good counter fight. Yeah, that's that's a really good point. It's great to have Naga with the setup, but it's in a way also a good counter. So really, the Naga doesn't do anything in this game, unless you combo it with the Dazzle offensively, which is hard to do at this point because there's so much AOE. And so Lil's job is basically just to walk around, maybe ensnare people that are trying to get away, and then uh, yeah, try to song whenever things get really bad, and hopefully it turns out good afterwards. Ooh, they spotted G. Ooh. They pinged him with Earthshaker. They're playing very passive. There it is, they get and him. And boom, quick slide of fist, catching G's like, what the hell's going on? How'd you know I was here? He's able to make it away though, he blinks to the southern side. Moo is on pursuit, oh, and he gets the quick snipe right there. Beautiful play from them, that was beautiful so eyes coming out from newbie. That was San Sheng spotting out, he pinged over there, and Ember didn't move at all. He didn't oh, make it thinking you. And also gonna get caught, and well, that Song of the Siren, not gonna stop him in BKB, but the ensnare will. Whew. Yeah, that's we were, another good counter. That's good. I'm starting to get harp on this Naga for what she really contributes. She shows me right there and saves Illidan yes. from dying. So, Gyro's uh, attack range is pretty low for a range here. It's only 365. Most range are about 600, like Co-op. Mm -hmm. And if he ensnares, it goes through BKB, and then you just can't move for five seconds. And that like Naga was close to Gyro, but slightly out of attack range, and that wastes Gyro's BKB and all that stuff. So that was good value, and that will actually scale very, very well going into the late game against Gyrocopter. The problem is his song is now in cooldown, and it's only a level one song. So you're yeah. looking at over two minutes of no song, and newbie are like, let's play. They're moving down this bottom lane to get the easy tier two, and I don't imagine them letting up one bit. They're going to see if they can force Virtus Pro to come at attention and defend this. Newbie, though, they get to their position Radiance that we saw before, Burge. Sanshang waiting in the wings, back and behind. Banana ready for any sort of jump in with the Static Storm. Moo, he's happy to brawl. Oh, she charges man. in, and they get the quick and easy cleanup on the G. Your Queen of Pain now out of the picture for about a minute, Purge. No buyback. Lil next. Moo is just going on an assault. He knows that he has the backup in, things, in case things get a bit hairy. But this could be the beginning of the end for Virtus Pro if they have no answer for this assault. That Every time they step close, he just steps out and chains them and says, no, no don't yeah. think about it. G thought he was hidden there. He thought he had line of sight, but he needed. He wasn't actually in the trees, so he got spotted there. And, man, this Ember Spirit just, they don't have any solutions against him. They didn't roam on him early, and he just keeps setting up for the follow-up from his support heroes and being the frontline tanker. And because their disables are a bit weak, he's just, he's not threatened in the slightest. This is where you almost switch. You had that song oh, for a good counter fight setup, but they get a good chains on the two. Great Back snowball. Heel, but the snowball puts him in a nice little safety locker, but oh, oh right into trouble. Oh, ho, ho. you thought you were safe, but you went right into the arms of San Shang and his beautiful echo. FNG is in trouble here. They had the glimpse even. He's just going to have to plant his firm ground, shallow grave, and pray. G, though, steps in. Big Sonic Wave, not going to be enough to finish off June. He is on the run here, has the blink, could avoid the snowball. It looks like the glimpse back was on G to pull him out from the snowball at, thereafter. DK Phobos, though, was able to catch up and Ooh. finish off the dark seed. Split by Illidan on the top lane. He gets a tower and a bit of a range barracks, but nothing more than that. He's got a Yasha here. Queen Pain gets a kill on Disruptor as well, so yep. that was okay. They lost a melee barracks, so not, not worth it, obviously, and it's a not, not a good position for VP to be in, but they're getting something out of this, and it's looking yes. like a glimmer of hope. They definitely can still win this game. Wow, Sunshine going to farm creep, so he finds Illidan instead. Will Illidan try for the kill? No. no. He's like, no way that Ember Spirit can wreck me. Yeah, and he's got a good HP now, 1600 with the Manta style. So. He's just so fast, too. Phase boots, the Yasha effect from the Manta, of course, and he's all over the place. And now not even a Silence will be able to lock him down. Yep, it's an item. Oh, he's actually he's oh, trying wow. for it. Oh, wow. They're both the Manta boys, maybe looking to go at it, but the quick chain reaction comes out from Moo, and he just says, see you later. If, Happy to pop back. If he didn't reacted that really fast and somehow got all of his mana drained it could have it wouldn't have been a kill probably because he's got way more hp than mana but it was a good little attempt by illidan make him think a little bit test his reactions mm -hmm. turns out the former ti winner is good at reacting fast yeah i mean i don't think there's any question that moo is rusty he's definitely looked pretty damn sharp in these two games so far even in their first loss he played a very good queen of pain obviously very quick to react quick setups quick chains in this run for his Ember Spirit. And Newbie are just trying to close out the series with at least Ooh, one point. They're gonna make the go, they're gonna catch out Illidan here. Good Goes into Manta, but it's not enough to stop the lockdown to follow. Even if he thought he could blink away, you have Banana there to pull him right back into trouble. So 
Newbie get the quick catch in, as my good oh, buddy Mott word? likes to say. He is Dunzo. Look at that ward. They just placed this down, like, about 20 seconds earlier, and it happened to see him going to farm. That's normally what you do with a, when you're kind of behind. It's good to farm the enemy team's jungle, because then they don't farm it, yeah. and then you can potentially kill any supports that come to pass. Oh. Fight going on. They catch right in the tusk. He snowballs in. They want banana, but it's not going to be happening. A big vacuum pullback, and good G grave. is in trouble. He's got a blink. They're able to get down Disruptor. He gets the grave and gets the hell out of there, and Lil. Ooh, great. Save. He's gonna get a good save with the song. That was perfect. So it was a good one-man pick. It was a, it was one hell of an expedition. Without having Ilden involved, they're able to get in, just get the one support grab. But it's and only they stole the gem. Oh, they took the gem. They're like, right. Dead. Thank you, song <laughs> TP. It was like it was like Ocean's Eleven or something. They actually <laughs> got robbed. <laughs> like, this is the, that was the most robbed thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Let's find they'll they'll get their own robbery here. They're gonna move into Roche and steal his Aegis away, and they'll probably be happy with that trade thereafter. It doesn't look like VP are gonna be close enough to contest. They even have Mu in the nearby farm spots to see if anyone's roaming on through. They'll see the little Lil illusions, which they'll quickly rid of, and they're not gonna be able to stop this. A cheeky play indeed, though. Yes. But he, for Virtus Plo, it's going to be high ground defense very soon. He's still going Battle Fury, actually, after the Manta Style, which makes a lot of sense, honestly. It doesn't synergize well with Manta Style because the plus damage doesn't go to the Illusions, but, you know, the mana gain is, is still very good, and at some point, cleaving from creeps onto heroes is always some extra damage that you're going to want, and especially... We've got a freaking Darkseer, man. Those guys are going to be clumped no matter what they try, and yep. most of the time, if Earthshaker's playing correctly, these, they're going to be chained on the whole time. Look at Sunshine. 2 0 and 14. That is a freaking Earthshaker, man. Yeah. He is playing fantastic this game. Ghost Scepter, Force, certainly the mobility. He's been in crucial position when necessary for the counter fight. He's been there in good position to get the fissures and lockdowns on some of these more elusive heroes. I mean, you look at the lineup of Virtus Pro, you see your AM, you see your Quap, a, a, a song, a, a snowballing tusk. You'd think it was a team that'd be very hard to get a hold of, but it's Newbie who are 23 to Virtus Pro's 11. And they've just had the tools necessary to get the lockdown. Definitely a lot of credit to the support staff of Doobie in game two here. But we look to Virtus Pro on what they could do to try to bring this game back. I know they would love to lead off their first series of TI5 with a 2-0 shutout. But Nuvi definitely uh, holding pretty damn strong. It looks like they're going to rid of the final hour tower if possible here, Purge, the top tier two. I just keep forgetting that they've pretty much been double raxed already. Guys, like I, I'm just watching them farm. I'm like VPs, they could potentially win this. And oh, those are those are big creeps. That's yeah. that's tough. Then your farm decreases. The experience you get is is lower. They have way more HP, so they're harder to kill. It just puts you in such a bad spot. And here comes the potential final defense here. They have to stop this, and they need yep. to get a big team wipe because they need gold advantage. This is they where don't they test uh, my sky cam, though, because you guys see the supports just waiting way behind for that big jump in opportunity. And now they have this Aegis, they can just dangle up Rabbit in the front as a little bait right there. Anything they expend to bring down this Jarrow's first life is something they won't have for the oh, real fight. Damage. But yep, they, the first slide of fist, they get the chains on G. FNG is brought down to Half-Life. Phobos Towers gets down. a big scratch. Tier 3 is dropped. Virtus Pro, they're going to have to do something. They're going in. They go in for Rabbit. Rabbit pops BKB, drops the call down here. Meanwhile, Tusk going on for that backstab. Wants to get rid of the Earthshaker if possible. Banana as well in big trouble. They want to get rid of the support staff. They get Banana down. He blinked for that. He's got three seconds. But he can't make it away from this. Oh, oh we didn't echo just came as up. the song comes up. Is going to allow G to make a slippery little escape. Lil heads back to base here. Do Newbie decide to pull back? They don't. It's uh, they have to defend now. The melee barracks is so low. It's at half now. They've got one left on the bot side, so that isn't it. But Rabbit sells Aegis. He's not dead yet. Vacuum into Enchant Totem. It looks like they're going down. Illidan's low. Oh, he falls. Man. Buyback for Illidan. Rumble. FNG will be there to fall. He is out of the picture. And Rabbit and company go right back to the racks to finish what they once had started. Illidan, desperate though, looking to move in, trying to get a hold of move. He, move. Get he got G! He goes down, oh gets G before he does end up getting dropped there from Illidan. San Shang locked in place, pops the Coast Scepter, looking to make it away here. Force is up if necessary, but Rabbit comes in to help him out. Now uses that force. They turn back on the Lil. Lil should be going down. Will that go is, down. That has got to be it. San Shang killing spree. This is going to be Megas here, and it looks like this series will be closed out. One to one. That means Virtus Pro and Newbie will both get one point in their first group stage appearance. Yeah, the 2-0 the is so important because you get three points instead of one, so you have to show a commanding victory over your opponents with the 2-0, and neither team was able to accomplish that. I, I dare say that Newbie played 
better as a whole in the series, and especially this game two was pretty darn one-sided, but I, I feel like it was a bit more due to inaction from VP than it was from good plays from Newbie. I think they had